Hello, this lecture will cover steps two, three, and four of cellular respiration, which will include the breakdown of pyruvate, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. So before we get into the second step, I want to remind you where we're coming from. So we started off our entire cellular respiration process with glycolysis. So this stage here is the glycolysis stage that I'll just write at the top. When we begin glycolysis, we started off with a six carbon molecule of glucose. In our energy investment stage, we added two molecules of ATP. We ended up with a separate six carbon molecule. In cleavage phase, we split that six carbon molecule to get two three carbon molecules. And then in the energy liberation phase, those three carbon molecules produced two molecules of ATP and one molecule of NADH independently. So again, make sure that you're very familiar with glycolysis. Make sure that you do not lose track of the carbons that we started the entire process with. You see, we haven't lost any carbon so far. All of our carbons has ju have just been transformed from a six carbon glucose molecule into two, three carbon molecules of pyruvate. So now we're going to take those three carbon molecules of pyruvate and see what happens to them in the second step of cellular respiration. So step number two of cellular respiration is uh, pretty intuitive. The name tells you exactly what's going to happen. It is the breakdown of pyruvate. So remember, we just made a nice three carbon molecule in which we called it pyruvate at the end of glycolysis. What happens in step two is we take our three carbon pyruvate and we break it down into a two carbon molecule in which we call it an acetyl group. We also are going to be able to produce NADH as well as a molecule of carbon dioxide. Once we're done with this step, we will have zero ATP produced, one molecule of NADH produced, one molecule of carbon dioxide produced, and also one molecule of an acetyl-CoA produced. So I just mentioned that acetyl group, but I'll talk a little bit about where the CoA part comes from. Now remember, this is per molecule of pyruvate. You have to remember that if you have any questions that ask you about per molecule of glucose, we're doubling that number. Because remember, glucose is six carbons, and we eventually took our six carbon glucose, split it into two, car two molecules of pyruvate. So all of these values will essentially be doubled if I ever ask you about how much carbon dioxide is produced per molecule of glucose versus how much carbon dioxide is produced per molecule of pyruvate. So please keep that concept in your brain as we walk through this lecture. So the glycolysis that we talked about in the first step of cellular respiration, you have to remember that it's actually produced in the cytosol, right? So I want you to understand that the pyruvate that we produced in the first step is also found right now in the cytosol because that's where we made it. So that pyruvate within the cytosol, the first step is actually transferring it into the mitochondria. So this second step of cellular respiration is actually the first step that occurs in the mitochondria. We know the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. We're familiar that it has a major role there. So it's our responsibility to kind of understand when the mitochondria comes into play. And in this particular case, we don't actually start working inside the mitochondria until we get to that second step. Now keep in mind, this is a great image because it shows that pyruvate moving into the mitochondria. But I want you to understand that you know, this is not from the book. So we want to keep our our language to be the breakdown of pyruvate for the second, second step. 
and not the formation of um, acetylcoenzyme A. So I just want you to, you know, never forget um, what we want to, what the language we want to use since sometimes you can find different terminology. Okay, so let's look into this step to see what occurs. So the breakdown of pyruvate. This is where we started off with our three carbon pyruvate here on the left. So I'll actually give it a different color so it might be a little clearer. Uh, three carbon pyruvate on the left. What's going to happen throughout this process is we're going to produce one molecule of carbon dioxide, one molecule of NADH, and we're going to add this coenzyme A. So the first thing I want you to notice is that we're losing or releasing carbon dioxide. Number one, carbon dioxide is not energy. So carbon dioxide is just a molecule. We know it, we breathe it out every day. It is not energy. So this does not represent uh, energy leaving the reaction because carbon dioxide is being lost. However, the carbon from carbon dioxide has to come from somewhere, correct? So remember, this had three carbons, one, two, three. In this step, we lost one of our carbons. So sometimes I'll ask you questions about the movement of the carbons throughout the process. I want you to see the first carbon that you lost came from pyruvate in the second step of cellular respiration. We went from one, two, three carbons. We lost a carbon. And then those remaining two carbons are here in pink. They actually combine with this coenzyme A to form an acetyl-CoA. So the name of the three carbon molecule is called pyruvate. Once it lost a carbon dioxide, it became a molecule called acetyl. And then eventually we add that coenzyme A on top of the acetyl, so you end up with acetyl-CoA. That's the big picture thinking here. Okay, so we have an enzyme involved with this process. Pyruvate gets oxidized by pyruvate dehydrogenase. You see it ends with ASE and it's oxidized. So I want you to think about if it's oxidized, does that mean it lost an electron or gained an electron? I won't tell you now, but think about that. That's a great question for me to ask. So once we lost this carbon dioxide in the first step of that breakdown of pyruvate, we only have a two carbon acetyl group left. So let's say if I were to identify my carbons from pyruvate from the green um, circle I just drew or the oval, if I lost one of my carbons in carbon dioxide, I'm now left with only two carbons. That two carbon group is called an acetyl. A few other things happen. We produce one molecule of NADH, that's here at the top, and this, uh, this substance called coenzyme A is actually added to the reaction. You see how it, it is added, the arrow goes in, and when it comes in, it attaches to the acetyl group that we have. So that acetyl group becomes attached to coenzyme A. So we end up with uh, losing one carbon dioxide, gaining an NADH, and then gaining a molecule essentially called acetyl-CoA, which is two carbons. So if we're tracking our carbons throughout this entire process. We started off with three, okay? and we ended up with a two carbon acetyl-CoA molecule and then one of those carbons was lost in the process. So take a second, if you need to rewind and start over, take a fresh sheet of paper and work through it. This is the time to work through it. This is the time during the lecture to be able to get those concepts so in class we can apply the concepts. This is where you learn the concepts, in class is where we apply it. Okay, so ask yourself, how many pyruvates did we produce in glycolysis? Two, the answer is two. So because of that, 
we are actually going to have a few different values when we talk about how much we produced per one molecule of pyruvate or per molecule of glucose because one molecule of glucose produces two pyruvates. So essentially this number here will be doubled. Let's go back to our image. I drew this a little bit earlier so you can easily track what's happening, but I'm going to kind of finish what I started with glycolysis, right? Remember energy investment to ATP, we split, produce four ATP, produce two NADH, you end up with two three carbon molecules of pyruvate. Let's follow those molecules of pyruvate in the breakdown of pyruvate. So at the end of our breakdown of pyruvate, we end up with a two carbon molecule of acetyl CoA up top. And then down here, we end up with a two carbon molecule of acetyl CoA as well. What are some other things that have happened along the way? Well, we still produced a molecule of NADH there. We produced it here in a DH. We lost a molecule of carbon dioxide, which I'll just make it a different color, CO2, CO2. We lost that carbon there. And then we also, um, some people like to add this, some people don't, so I'll leave it up to you, but a few students like to put the fact that we did also add in that coenzyme A, right? Some people really like to put it because it helps them to remember that that coenzyme A attached to become acetyl-CoA. You do not have to put that in there necessarily, but a few students find it helpful. So you're already seeing what's happening. We're starting off with a six carbon molecule of glucose. We go through glycolysis, then we start on the second step, which is the breakdown of pyruvate. Let me just do, sometimes I'll write B of P because they're kind of long words. And throughout the breakdown of pyruvate, we see this pyruvate gets broken down and you lose a carbon dioxide. You add that coenzyme A and you also produce or make NADH. Now, NADH is energy. So, I know we talked about carbon dioxide not being energy. NADH is energy, so please make sure you're familiar with that. Once you're done, you end up with a two carbon molecule of acetyl-CoA, and it, that happens twice. So again, sometimes you might get questions that say, per molecule of glucose, how much NADH do you produce in step two of cellular respiration? So per molecule of glucose, how much NADH do you produce in step two? That would be one, two. You produce two molecules of NADH because I asked per molecule of glucose. Sometimes I will say per molecule of pyruvate, how much NADH do you produce in the second step of cellular respiration? This is the second step per molecule of pyruvate, only one NADH. So make sure, like I said, you know these steps front and back. It is so imperative you know that so that you won't get confused when I have you apply this information. This is a learning stage. You do it on your own. When we apply things in class, make sure that you know this. All right, so breakdown of pyruvate. Let's look here. The breakdown of pyruvate, per one molecule of pyruvate, I am making um, one CO2, one NADH, um, one um, acetyl-CoA, and zero ATP. Same thing uh, with glucose, except it's doubled. So now I have two carbon dioxides, two NADHs, two acetyl-CoA, and then still I have zero ATP. So make sure you understand that. Make sure if I ask why you have double the number per molecule of glucose as compared to per molecule of pyruvate, you know the answer. 
you know why you have double the number here um, as compared to pyruvate. Again, take a second to rewind and rewatch and make sure you understand these concepts. Make sure that you understand exactly how we're getting to those numbers. Make sure you understand what energy is exiting, entering, um, how the carbons are moving, uh, being able to understand how much we produce per pyruvate, per, per glycolysis or glucose. Um, take a sheet of paper and see if you can do this on your own. We've covered both of these steps at this point. So can you just start off with a six carbon molecule of glucose on a blank sheet of paper and move through this? Work on this PowerPoint or this uh, YouTube video until you can do this on your own without looking at your notes. That's when you know you have the information. So if you don't feel like you can do this on your own, then please rewatch these videos, take your notes, do what you have to do to be able to understand this on your own. It's going to make a huge difference. So um, I'm actually going to stop this lecture so that you have separate lectures for each of the stages and you will have a new video on the remaining steps.